Yo, what's up, guys, and welcome to the movie newbie. My name is Jabril Sahimi, and I am the newbie. Oliver Mangum, writer, producer, fellow film lover, occasionally capable of insight. Rafael Luca, thespian, cinephile, and human golden retriever. So yeah, enjoy the show. Yo, what's up, and welcome back to the movie newbie. I'm your host Jabril Sahimi, and as usual, I'm joined by the still sick Raf. Unfortunately, hope you're feeling better. It is what it is. And Ollie. Yo, not sick. Perfectly healthy. He's a sick guy. Yeah, he's a sick guy. He's a sick bastard. <laughs> um, but yeah. Sick in the mind, <laughs> not the body. Well, well, we're going to be doing a freaking crazy movie today. Uh, yeah. We're going to close out the boxing theme with A Prayer Before Dawn. Now, this one was a harrowing experience. We, we're keeping the trend from Raging Bull to A Million Dollar Baby. And now, one of, I think, one of the most graphic movies I've ever seen. Yeah. A Prayer Before Dawn, starring Joe Cole, the guy from uh, Peaky Blinders. He's the third brother. I can't remember what his name is in Peaky Blinders, but um, he's not Thomas Shelby. Well, that was a really bad brum. <laughs> That's all right. How, how do you do brum? Um, um, Birmingham. 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 Yeah. All right, Arthur. Birmingham. Yeah, Arthur. Um, all right, Tommy. <laughs> um, but yeah, what are your initial thoughts on this movie, guys? Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Um, so I, I I had seen this film before mm -hmm. a few years ago. Um, and yeah, I think I, I really liked it at the time. Um, but coming back into it, wow. Um, yeah, I think this is an astonishing film. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think for me, this is experiential cinema. This is not your typical Rocky sort of mm. boxing movie. Mm. This is not, I mean, so it plays with, it has the familiar beats just lying there mm -hmm. for your standard underdog boxing movie. You have, you know, the guy who falls down, the guy who has to overcome personal trauma, who finds redemption in the ring, who who finds support through a loving partner, mm -hmm. all that stuff, who reconnects with their father. At the end, all of that stuff is there, but I don't think the director is interested in it at all. He mm -hmm. wants to make a completely immersive piece of cinema that just brings you into this world and he wants to focus on like the physical and sensuous elements yeah. of not just boxing, but also existing in this really like hellish space, basically. Yeah. Um, so I think on that visceral level, I thought it was a fantastic piece mm -hmm. of filmmaking um, with a great performance at the center. I just loved what stood out to me, I think, watching it this time was the authenticity. And I think mm -hmm. we, we can talk about a little bit about that later. But yep. it felt so lived in and so real. And so it, it was not exactly pleasant viewing, but it was an experience. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it is a bit of a hackneyed thing to say, but it's a gut punch. Yep. And I, I really appreciated it, the director taking us on that journey. Um, I, I do have a, a, maybe some minor nitpicks, I suppose, with some of yeah. the storytelling aspects. But overall, I was really, really impressed with this film. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I totally agree with you. I think what hits home as well is like the fact that we all grew up in Southeast Asia. Yeah. And I guess we know the consequences of... Well, you worked yeah. as a police and officer. I, yeah, so yeah. I was a police officer. You actually visited like some prisons in Southeast Asia. Well, uh, in uh, Singapore. I've, I've been to like cells, Shang, like a prison. jail cell, yeah. but I've never been to the prison. Right. Um, but... Uh, like we know the consequences of like not following the law in yeah. Asia, you know, and especially in places like Thailand and Indonesia. And just if you go there, just don't fuck around because you will get like you you'll end up in a place where you don't want the hammer be. of the law will come down swift and mercilessly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, same thing. Um, uh, initial thoughts is, is just like I'm so amazed at how it how much of a. Um, first person kind of point of view experience that you get. Um, it'd be interesting to see what this movie would be like as as like a VR kind of oh AR God. experience. Would be That'd be like the least weird. popular VR yeah. experience well, ever. Yeah, because I even, wouldn't want to do that. I think the the editing and the way this film was shot and like just the there's there's like these shots of him entering and exiting. Uh, the 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 bedrooms you know like i think there's this one where he goes from the bedroom to to move into the boxing room like the boxing uh bunk i guess and there's this amazing shot where it looks like it's like a vr thing so yeah the editing uh amazing performance so graphic and i felt like it was just very realistic and um 
yeah, I love how it was adapted from a true story, which, uh, fun fact, the guy that you see at the end of the movie playing his dad is the yeah, yeah. guy that he is playing. Billy, 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 Billy Moore. Moore. Also, just quickly before we go over to Raph, what you said about that first person experience mm. of it, I think I think it was really smart how they didn't give subtitles for a lot of the Thai yes. dialogue yeah, in the yeah, film. Yeah. Yeah. Because for those who don't speak Thai, which are probably the majority of people who watch this film, mm. you are 100% in the shoes of yeah. Billy more mm. as in because he doesn't speak any Thai and you were mm. just completely an outsider yeah and I really respected yeah. that choice well it kind of it reminded me of national service a lot it's it's different but yeah. the same you know like I remember going they shaved my head I go into a room I'm kind of like the fish out of water Lost where in yeah I'm Singaporean but I grew up uh, away from Singapore most of my life I grew up um, in an expat community so when I was there I was like fuck what's going on people speaking Malay uh, Cantonese Mandarin uh, mm -hmm. Tamil and I was like uh, and it's it's a it actually kind of gave me a little bit of PTSD from that moment like when I saw the uh, these things, but yeah. What about you, Raf? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, everything that you guys highlighted is is what I experienced as well. There's something so physical, animalistic, uh, and raw about it, and primal. So for me, I had watched this film, and I don't. I'm not. Hey, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't. I wasn't excited or thrilled by watching it again because the <laughs> first time I was so. It left such a. It was cathartic, but it was also like deeply arresting experience. Like I was quite shook by this film the first yeah. time I watched it. I was like, well, I'm not visiting this film probably ever, ever again. again. <laughs> <laughs> and then in come Gabriel. Boxing themes, guys. <laughs> and I, you know what? As soon as you gave me that list, I was like, fuck, we're done. All right, here we go. Because like with these films, yeah. like as much as I go into them and I want to experience them, but they, they scar me, man. I think mm, we were talking about yeah. Gaspar Noé's films and I was like, those films yeah. scar me. Like they leave an impact print that I'm like great I watched it that's it mm -hmm. don't have to do that anymore those French filmmakers man they'll, Dude, fuck, you fuck, up. they'll fuck you up seriously what the hell uh, Sauver um, but yeah but I think this time this time around watching it again it really gave me a sense of it had this commentary on the body the mm. human body and it was very focused and honed in on the body and it just had this like this depiction of the human body and what it goes through and not just his body, but all bodies in the cell, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like trapped animals, like animals in cages and what an animal does when it is in that situation in mm -hmm. that circumstance, but also not just in a violent sense that it was a commentary on the body, but also in an intimate and sensitive sense mm -hmm. where like, the first thing we see in this film is the massage, you know, like them getting prepped and him getting prepped by yeah. the little boy. And there's a sense oh, yeah. of touch. And the, and the Muay Thai. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also like him, you know, uh, making love with fame or, or, or having those moments of caress and, and then the physicality and the brutality. And also so just like the, the shots of the, everyone sleeping basically yeah, on top of one another. On top of one Their another. Their bodies just sort of and then, in Congress. Yeah, yeah. Just like they had some visceral... Um, brutal, intimate, like all of it, uh, but just in relation with the human body and the human mm. body in this film is mostly naked or almost naked. Um, so it was like a really like, um, yeah, sensory experience of, of the human body. Yeah. Nice. What, something you just made me think of just there is like, um, I remember reading a quote from Henry Cavill mm -hmm. talking about um, filming the, was it Mission Impossible Fallout? Mm -hmm. And he said it was really nice because he usually has to do topless scenes in when he was doing the Superman films right. or when he was doing his other projects. He said, it's really nice not having to do a topless scene because you don't have to push yourself as hard every single week to make sure you have that incredibly cut, yeah. ripped physique when you're on camera. You can kind of just focus on being on the performance. Yeah. But then I think of Joe Cole in this movie, he's shirtless the entire, I'm pretty yeah. sure the entire film. Yeah. I think the the film, the production lasted like 27 days or 20, 27 uh, days. That, yeah. that, is a, that is a behind the scenes documentary. I'd love to oh, watch. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Like kudos to him for putting himself through that. Cause I, I have to mm. kind of imagine that was an easy shoot. No. No, it's probably very yeah. intense. So performance or is there any performances yeah yeah for me it's the ensemble the ensemble, uh, the ensemble of uh, the Thai nice. inmates um mm. they i mean you know uh, jean stefan sauver worked with um i think one of the main um inmates mm -hmm. uh the, the the kind of the head of the cell right uh he 
I think he found him on Facebook um, and he was quite popular. He had been in and out of prison. He was, um, he got out of prison the first time because he became a champion as well. Um, right. Wait, so are you talking about the bo- the leader of the boxers? Or no, 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 the gang leader. Yeah, the gang leader. leader. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, who's yeah. in his cell. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, he got in contact Kang. with him first and he was the kind of, he became like this kind of casting director of sorts because right. he's the one who introduced him to all the, uh, all the other. Because yeah. he had, he'd got those tattoos in prison himself. Yeah. Right. He was at the time like an ex-convict. I think he's in prison now. He's in prison now. Hey, you oh, he's back in prison? Went back he went to, back to prison like a like shortly after this film came yeah. out. You watched yeah. the same interview I did, didn't you? No, I uh, uh, no, I just read some stuff online. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, no, because there's some really fascinating interviews between Sovial and, and Joe Cole, and they go deep in, right. in, in the to the you know the the creation of this piece. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's it's for me, I'd have to give it to to that whole ensemble and how like they just deeply enrich the whole world and. Yeah, it's incredible what they do, and it's and a lot of it, if not most of it, is improvised. Mm. So, it's incredible. I didn't. It, a lot of the film is. Yeah, improvised, well, that's what it? Joe Cole like points out in one of the, the interviews. He said, like, you know, part of the casting process is they had to do a lot of improvisation, and a lot of the improvisation they did during casting they actually used in the film, and you can sense it. You can sense mm. that like some of it's yeah. not like it's very free flowing. Yeah, very... actually, there's like one or two scenes where it's clear that there was scripted dialogue. Yes, for the Thai actors, and I th- yeah. those ones actually came off the most false Less for me. authentic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Including our guy, um, uh, Vitaya Penrisgarm? Penrisgarm? Uh, oh, who, yeah, yeah. Officer, Officer Preacher. Preacher. Yeah, yeah. yeah, who was in Only God Forgives as well, which is a film. Amazing. Well, I was gonna, he was going to be my, apart from, uh, well, my pick would be Joe Cole, I think. Um, yeah. Look, I, I love the ensemble, I th- I, and Kang is an absolute standout, I think, too, as well as um, the actress who played Fame. I think her name is Cherry Miko. But this is, Joe Cole's film, like there's no two ways about it. I think what he does, what he puts himself through physically in this film, I think is really commendable. And yeah, that the actor who played Officer Preacher, you're right. I think some of his scenes, they were sort of overburdened with those those scripted lines or that sort of um you could feel like the weight of the story that they Actory. felt they there was to like tell. a sense of acting. Yeah, exactly. To it, but yeah. I still think he's an incredible presence on screen. Yes. So those scenes still sort of worked for me. They stand. But, yeah. Um, mm. yeah. I mean, yeah, I was going to go with Joe Cole. Um, why hasn't he been in other shit? Like, he's in Gangs of London, right? Like now? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a, lot of TV of work. a lot of TV work. I he, mean, he should be in fucking... I just he's, feel he's great. like this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, mm. but I feel like he's... Or, or he has done very one noted uh, performances yeah. where oh, okay. he brings out this type of character. Right. So when I see a prayer before dawn and I see him, and yes, he's fantastic, but I've also seen mm. this side. I, so um, I actually he wasn't even supposed. To I actually met Joe Cole oh, right. briefly. Oh, here I have we a bit go. Of story Name about drop. That. <laughs> no, it wasn't in a. It wasn't in any sort of professional networking capacity. It was in the loop. He spilled a beer over my <gasps> older brother while we were watching a Man United game in Brixton. No <laughs> way. And um, I, I will say this. He was very, uh, he did politely offer to buy my brother another drink because right. he'd spilled my brother's beer. Right. Um, so he did do that. But also he seemed kind of like a bit of a twat. I'm not going to lie. So I was standing behind <laughs> him the entire match. Doesn't, I, don't, I know. And judging from interviews, he doesn't seem like the most affable, approachable guy. No, but I will uh, say, I, I see what you mean. I don't think he's the he's got the most range as an actor from what I've seen. But I think what he, he brought to this performance was not what he says does with his words. Yeah. What he does with, it's, it's just his body. It's body. I thought it's it was a, yeah. a completely physical performance and I thought it worked really well. Yeah. Do you know who was cast in this film originally? I can't remember his name, but like it's weird the fact that it was Adam wasn't Sandler. <laughs> yeah, how did you know? No, it, when when it, when you hear it, you'll be like, oh, of course, because it, it was Charlie Hunnam. Uh, yeah, they yeah. built this film around yeah. Charlie Hunnam. Yes. When you think this, like Joe Cole sense. is basically like the the bootleg uh, Charlie Hunnam. Like, that's not. Big, I, I mean, I love Joe Cole in this film. I think he's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. But I think Charlie Hunnam loves these kinds of projects Physical, where it's like, about someone who goes through a physical hell and has to fight their way yeah, out. Yeah. But I also, I don't think Charlie Hunnam is that good of an actor. That's me personally. I'm with you I there. I think Joe Cole mm. probably gave a better performance than Charlie Hunnam could have here. Yeah. Mm. I'm with you there. Yeah, I don't really, inf- I don't really like Charlie Hunnam either. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> and that's our show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so we're uh, not going to have scenes. Him. Yeah. We're not going to watch Charlie Hunnam films <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite scene? Ooh. Um, I've, I've, I've got one. Um. Again, I think I said this about Raging Bull, 
but I feel like it's hard to pick favorite scenes from this film because it does feel like a continuous experience. Mm-hmm. I feel like the way it's edited, the way it's scored, I think that's another thing in the camera yeah. work. It just feels like it's one long experience that doesn't break until you get mm-hmm. to the end. Yeah. But that being said, I really loved the scene where Billy gets his tattoo ah, well, on his back. Yeah. Was that what you're gonna pick? Yeah, it was my. I just, I, I thought it's it great was scene. It, the the camera work and the and it does this throughout, but the the cinematography was brilliant. Mm. The way that it just sort of hovers over the bodies, it focuses all on those men's bodies and their their tattoos yeah. glistening with sweat. And I thought the way that they were all sitting around him, I thought it was so beautifully mm. like blocked. And then it felt like a really joyous moment because a lot of this film is just abject terror yeah. and discomfort and brutality. Yeah. And there are those brief moments where you see like actual. Intimacy. communion and intimacy yeah. between these men yeah. uh there's a similar one when he's at a dinner table i think but like i love that i thought it was really good yeah uh, just to touch upon that it's just like um thai culture you know it's like this sense of uh community and brotherhood and especially with muay thai like mm. um even in training like i think you 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 saw it like with this movie it's like when you spar when you're practicing you're practicing you're not fighting each other you don't go hard and try and kill the other person you don't like if you go to thailand and do that like either they'll come after you and beat the shit out of you or they just won't train with you because that's disrespectful to the art form mm. of what they're trying to do yeah. and it's the same with tattooing it's like uh Especially in the movie, like in the prison context where it's illegal, you know, so like, uh, well, not illegal, but you're not allowed to do it. Um, the fact that they're doing it together and just that shot was just incredible. Uh, that was like an honorable mention for me. Yeah. Uh, do you have any honorable mentions? I was going to say like that's a ritual, uh, ritualistic bonding yeah. uh, of sorts. But I, I, I think most of my mentions were going to be intimate moments, mm. just because it gives a little of brevity or levity to 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 these uh, to the harsh world that we're in. Mm-hmm. But I'll counter that and I'll say, you know what, the boxing scenes, because mm. this time mm. the boxing scenes, you're in it. You're mm-hmm. like, and the way it's filmed and the way like I saw some of the behind the scenes footage is the cameraman's right next to Joe Cole or right next to the other yeah. fighter. And you're, you're, and they you're, shot them all in long takes so they that they did. couldn't, they, the couldn't they, they couldn't fake them yeah. out. Yeah. I think I read somewhere that Joe Cole real punch. We had to just actually yeah. fight each other basically. Yeah. And I love the movements from like over the shoulder and then yeah. like when they're not fighting, you'll see his face. So the, the cameraman will go behind yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the opponent. But when they're fighting, they actually face the opponent. So it's... You oh, just it feel just, like you're in yeah, the ring, right? Yeah. You're in the ring, you're fighting You're fighting with, yeah. with Joe Cole. Well, see, so that, like, like what Million Dollar Baby does with exposition and narrative, this movie does with the lack of. It's just all like... I Just like the body, as yeah, you said. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. So the fighting sequences. Oh, nice nice yeah. choice. Especially the last one yeah. being the, the main one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to go with, uh, I guess it's a sequence of scenes when he wakes up uh, at the hospital and realizes that he's kind of free and yeah. he has he goes for a walk. Yeah. And I just love the thought process in his head where it's, I think, a common thing amongst people who've been in prison. Um, and I've, I remember listening to, like reading this quote uh, by someone in the U.S. They were like, it's, it's easier to i can't remember exactly the words but he's like it's easier to get caught for a crime and go to jail because at least in jail they'll keep you alive unless you get caught for depending on where you are you might get uh (laughs) executed but um that's the kind of thing it's like you have this like almost prisoner mentality where now you've been there for so long that like the outside world is just too much um and the way that that's all said in his face in his eyes and just coming off of that fight that where he just like almost dies. And mm. then I think right after that, he goes back and then he meets his dad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I think what I, what I love, what it communicates without any words in that scene is that when he comes back to the prison afterwards, he's achieved this new sense of grace yeah. and lightness and contentedness because mm-hmm. the thing is he almost entered the prison as a choice that time. Yeah, He had the option to... Yeah. And he very likely would have ended up being shot or yeah. being taken back to prison. But he had the option to walk free mm-hmm. and he willingly went back to prison. And because he went back to prison, you're no longer, it's almost like you're no longer in a prison of the mind, yeah. basically. Yeah. 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 And so it was a beautiful choice. note to end yeah. the film on, I yeah. thought. I, I had a dumb, <laughs> I had a dumb thing. Um, but when he walks out of the hospital and he starts walking for like a long time, yeah. I'm like, 
damn, how does he know his way back? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I thought he walked back to prison. <laughs> no, I'm just like, I'm just I like, how did he know how to come back to the hospital? I feel like yeah. he's been walking for like uh, quite a while. I was like, yeah. how did he find the hospital again? Yeah. Well, it's like, it's, what if he tries to go back and he's like, fuck, where the well, it's, fuck it's was It's like people who hospital? like go swimming in movies. Like I try to do this whenever they go underwater, I hold my breath and I'm like, no, 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 yeah, I just yeah. found like a funny thought of like, what if he just didn't remember where he was? Because you know yeah. Bangkok's crazy big and like crazy confusing. So yeah, well, like, we yeah. don't really know how long he's been there for. Though. That's true. Yeah. He probably knows. Maybe he knows yeah. Bangkok like yeah, very, very well. But I'm just it was just like a funny thought that occurred mm. to me of like, shit, where's this hospital? And he's like trying to do good. He's trying to go back. He's like, no, 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 I fucked up. Mm. I fucked. Excuse me, where's the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Anyways, so, I've seen I it if, twice. So I don't know if we're to gonna be that. able to do this next section. Uh, oh. Favorite quote. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh right. Yeah, because there's yeah. like no quotes in this um, movie. Well, there are, but Shit, they're. I, didn't, I yeah. did not write a line down. Yeah, I actually I just wrote I need to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote Yaba, Yaba, no. Yaba. Yeah, because even on like uh, on IMDb, <laughs> yeah. there's just like one one quote. quote. Yeah, <laughs> so, I think I know the one I looked it yeah, up as yeah, well. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I I I think it's gonna be difficult to. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I think. If we're gonna say something for this section, I favorite physical the, moment, or maybe I I like the dialogue between him and his partner, fame. Yeah, fame, yeah. fame in yeah. the in the the film. Yeah. I thought it was quite gentle and yeah. Um, oh, I did have yeah. It's, it's his gentle yeah bits. Yeah. I did have. I think I I didn't write it down, but I think it's uh, one line from Fame uh, when she says about her father like. Yeah. Being disgusted by her when she You didn't accept me for yeah, who I am. Yeah, there it is. That's the line. And then she yeah. was like, and then I killed him. Or like I murdered him or something. Doesn't she say that? I I think she did she mentioned at the top that yeah. she killed her father. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a yeah, powerful line. Mm. Armchair uh, moment. Oh sorry. Oh yeah. And I was gonna say the moment where the boxers were telling each other their crimes. Yeah. Because yeah. those do are actual wanna, sorry, do you want to say that? I cut you off there with the armchair moment thing oh it's fine okay, okay. i mean yeah there's uh to the edit. other moment was the uh the moment where all the boxers were sharing their stories yeah which are true confessions those the, that's an improvised moment oh really yeah, oh, wow. these are actual sentences wow oh, yeah. really so were those current yeah inmates? those are those are inmates or though they oh. were they were telling why they were in, once in prison mm. yeah because yeah, that one guy says that he got into boxing because you can go outside um, and you to can see, see your, your family, family outside for, for a little a bit. He hours, said it yeah. warms your heart. Yeah. Mm. Or the hitman who who became a hitman because that's the only thing he could do. He had yeah. no money. Yeah. Those are actual stories. Yeah. Wow. Armchair. Um, I thought the, I wrote down here, I think the relationship between Billy and Faith could have been developed a little bit further. Mm. That was one of those moments. Faith where or fame? Oh, sorry. Fame. fame. I wrote fame. down faith for some reason. Fame. Maybe I got fame. Fame. No, fame, right? It is yeah. fame. It is yeah. fame. You're correct. Sorry. Um, uh, th th there were those these moments in the film where I felt like they felt the need to like probably adhere to a script where there was mm -hmm. a more conventional narrative. So there's the moment where he has one of those dips where he sees her in the in her yeah. uh, I guess in her little workstation with another yeah. man, and he gets all really upset because they've just been intimate together recently yeah. and she's like you don't understand and then he gets crazy and then he goes does some drugs and then yeah. he goes beat somebody up and then mm. he gets and he ends up in solitary confinement again and i just felt like that was especially because there's not much attention paid to the dialogue mm -hmm. i just didn't think that it was exp explained well enough what happened there mm. and i felt like their relationship could have been developed a little bit further mm. based on how it was used in the story overall but that's a a fairly minor nitpick i think yeah uh, I would say the same, like similar. It's just nitpicking, but uh, the development of like um, Muslims versus uh, like Thai, like not oh, Thai, yeah. but I, I would I would guess it would be like Buddhist, Buddhist or yeah. whatever majority faith that yeah. it would be in, the, like, in the that sort jail. Of the, the tribal factions in the prison. Yeah, like, yeah and because like it seems like there was tribal factions. There were uh, prison guards that were in on it. Yeah, also. I guess amongst like among religious lines and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So to be like the only um, white person in this place and having to play both sides, I think that would have been. But then again, you know, this would have been an entirely different, different story. movie. Yeah. And I guess this was uh, touched upon like from the book. I don't know how well adapted the book is. 
Um, I think a lot of it was taken directly yeah. from the book. I did read that there were some obvious um, uh, divergences. Right. I think one interesting thing was that most um, these major, these massive prisons in Thailand, mm-hmm. they have like this. It wasn't featured, but Bangkok Hil- Hilton is one of them, famously called. They actually are really international. Like mm. a lot of the people that are in prison there right. are people from different parts of the world. Yeah. I think they intentionally chose not to use that here. Yeah. So that we're zeroed in on Billy's experience yeah. as an outsider. Yeah. Because he's like the only person who's not tired that you see in mm. the entire film. Um, but usually in the book, I think he mentions there were like gangs of people from like Australia. There were gangs of people from like Iran. Right. There were like Singaporeans yeah, yeah. in prison. There were yeah. there were just anyone who had been caught doing something wrong. Okay, well, Thailand that makes sense. Yeah. That does. Yeah, yeah. 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 makes sense. Thailand is very international, yeah. especially Bangkok's very international. Yeah. It does make sense. Uh, I'm trying to think of an armchair moment. I don't really have one. Um, well, like I, I remixed it before and being like, uh, if this could be directed by someone else or sure. if a different actor was playing some. But the part. great thing about this movie is that it doesn't have any influences, or at least I don't feel like it has any draw, or draws any influences from anything else. It's quite its own beast. Mm-hmm. And I think Sauver does say that. Yeah. He he said that he didn't want to be influenced by anyone yeah. because he wanted to make a raw depiction well, of... There's this movie uh, like in colonial South Africa, and I think it has Daniel Craig and... Oh, uh, Daniel Craig speaking Daniel South Craig African. And the guy that plays Voldemort. What's his name? Ralph Ralph Fiennes. Ralph Fiennes. Ray Fiennes. Fiennes. Ray, what? Yeah. Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes. Yeah, the, yeah, I always get mixed up. I, I say thing. Ralph Fiennes too. Okay. He's he's posh, so you don't pronounce the oh, R-P-H. Right. R-P-H. Um, but there's this uh, movie about boxing as well that happens in South Africa. And this movie reminded me of that. And I only watched that movie in like eighth, like year eight or year seven because we were studying the apartheid. Um, but yeah, I, I think, can't remember what it's Well, I think... Um, if I could just put in, maybe sprinkle in more intimate moments, because I know they really, they really go hard with the brutality and like you know, including the the rape scene that's like pretty out there. Um, I just feel like maybe finding balance between that and this like more uh, delicate and intimate moment of brotherhood between the the cellmates. Because you do get them, but like I feel like it, they're not quite even down. Maybe that's not what it's about. Yeah, like I remember there was a scene. You know when he gets moved from the his cell to the box, the Muay Thai boxer's cell. Yeah, which is obviously a, a massive. You know, it's like a step upgrade. up. I think it's yeah. an upgrade. Exactly, it's like going from like shit class to business class or something. Oh, yeah, but um. You know, he's like saying goodbye, and some of them are getting emotional. Yeah, and I was like, that does feel like it comes I'm a like, little bit out of nowhere. Did, yeah. it's like. There's when, maybe when did you one guys or bond? two scenes where he seems to be in getting on with them, but I'm like, most of these people are like trying to kill you. Most of the yeah, time. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, I mean, one of the gang leaders tried to give him AIDS like later on. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh god. Was like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Um, so yeah, just maybe some of that because like it did feel quite uneven at times, uh, or just kind of like out of nowhere, like when he does leave his cell and he gets a hug from one of his cellmates, and I'm like, oh, they, I guess they're friends. Um, yeah. just like having... that like sidekick character that they completely <laughs> left out of this movie yeah I'm like what there's happened? always that in the prison movie you have that one scrappy like skinny guy who's like I'll show Helps you the ropes out. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it that was him that's uh, the guy you don't yeah. want to mess with it's yeah. like uh, Chris Rock in the longest yard yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. There, yeah. We exactly. there we go there we go so yeah just a bit, bit more sensitive and bonding moments I guess to, huh. to make this movie more digestible yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, alright so Oh shit, bonus. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I totally forgot to do a bonus for this one. Which prison would you um, pick a, a uh, um, If you could pick a if you if I have three prisons, which <laughs> prisons would you rather go to? Guantanamo I Bay. I have a mystery question for you guys. Okay. Oh snap. So Billy Howell is from the great city of Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Not Billy Howell, sorry. No, Billy, Billy Moore. Moore. I was gonna Billy say Moore. who the fuck is Billy Howell? So Howell? who would win in a fight? Billy Moore. Or James Milner, <laughs> <laughs> Billy Moore, of course. Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> All right, what about Billy Moore and Jamie Carragher? Jamie Carragher, as we know, doesn't mu- is not afraid of being dirty. He'll spit at you. Yeah, he will. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we're gonna go with boxers, then it has to be Rio Ferdinand. 
because he's an yeah. actual box. Like he boxes. Oh, and he's yeah, pretty yeah, big too. Sure. Yeah, he's but a, he's, he's not a, Liverpool Pudlian, so it's not, yeah, no, it's he's not, from doesn't make he's sense. from London. <laughs> I don't know where this Liverpool thing came from. Because Billy Moore yeah. is from Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh he's right, right, right. right. Look, man. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Liverpool versus Manchester. <laughs> Liverpool versus Manchester, the eternal, um, uh, the eternal battle. <laughs> yeah, who would win a boxing match? Yeah, uh, Wayne Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Rooney or Steven Gerrard? <laughs> Definitely Wayne Rooney, and he's he's from Liverpool. Wayne Rooney. <laughs> uh, wait, is he though? Yeah, he's 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 from, oh, he's from Everton. Shit. Oh uh, yeah. facts. Yeah. Anyways, wow, this anyways, is a, this is a tangent. Um, yeah, that was such a tangent. <laughs> Football nerds, <laughs> nerd. Um, Dwayne no. Rooney. Uh, you know what? Fuck the mystery question for this oh, one. <laughs> damn. Oh. If you think that, well, I wanted to give my like sum up on the three films, uh, just because it's the last film of the theme. If you were caught with drugs. In your possession. Okay, yeah. Which country would you want to be? Yeah, which, which, what? I'd say Norway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, of Sweden. course. We're gonna yeah. say Scandinavia. Yeah. Sweden yeah. or no, Norway. Yeah, Norway, where they give you like a house and you can like leave the jail. Get a PS4. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. Am I, can I can I be a diplomat's son though? Ooh. Because I had a friend in university. Of course, I won't name their name, but their uh, their dad was like the um, ambassador for I think like our. For I think Spain and oh now okay now that's getting too br- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay basically I know him. <laughs> you know, this was someone in university whose dad was an ambassador in a South American country and he said that basically Spain. he got caught with um, the Colombian marching powder several times and he would just flash that card that said he's the family yeah. of a diplomat member and then I mean we had he some, was just let off we had some friends in Singapore that kind of had that like that that healthy badge you know where they kind of uh, yeah. could get away I mean, with like certain things everywhere in the world yeah every person has a number and yeah. there's always someone bigger than you that yeah. can tell you to fuck off and stand down so yeah. yeah i guess in other countries it's like more prevalent yeah well like you said at the beginning of the episode like don't 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 take drugs when you're traveling around anywhere Asia. yeah i mean right. we don't condone taking illegal drugs no anywhere yeah. at all yeah no, but i mean just sort, like but doing because that's like don't break the law the, in, yeah, in southeast yeah. asia or just anywhere Any, yeah, yeah or anywhere just anywhere, anywhere outside, outside of your own we're just hometown. haunted yeah. we're, we're just haunted your own we're, country we're haunted by that fact because like we've traveled around southeast asia and we yeah. kind of know the reputation of prisons i went down to there. I, I just remember this i went to a prison in um thailand no, I wasn't taken there <laughs> as an inmate. Only true confessions. I went there Ollie. to teach when I was doing my gap year. Oh. I went to a ladies prison in Thai, in Chiang Mai. Oh. And this was filmed in a Chiang Mai prison. Yeah, it was. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, look at good guy, man. You're a good guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, ratings? Let's do it. Uh, wait, didn't you want to do, do your summary of the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the summary... Oh, wait, um, do we want to do our ratings first? Okay, Sorry, then we can do ratings then. We can do ratings then. Ratings first? Uh, yeah, who wants to go first? I will give this movie... 9.8 yabas out of 10. Ooh. Damn. See, Raf does this. He always either goes so high or so low. I have to readjust my... Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't base it on me. All right, all right, all right. I'll stick to my original. I'm going to give this... I think he took my token as well. No, no. I'm going to give this 8.5 out of 10 fighting fish. Fighting fish? When was there fighting yeah. fish? You know, yeah, like the, 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 the he bottles. won the bet. Yeah. He had that oh, jar with yeah, the two yeah, fish yeah, that were yeah, fighting. Yeah, 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 damn. I Which totally was also about that scene. a metaphor for them. Yeah. They all fight. <laughs> well, because they're trapped in a little bowl <laughs> yeah. and they have to fight. Um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to say 10 out of 10. Oh, oh. oh, so this was your favorite boxing movie out of the three, then? Yeah. Yes, yeah, nice. my, my favorite out of the three. Uh, nice. I'm gonna go, yeah, ten out of ten. Um, bottles of lotion. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Got a moisture up. Um, oh, right for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and so yeah. So the sum up of the boxing man. films. Um, I kind of wish I did like a little bit more positive one. I I, I didn't realize how dark and depressing. Rocky. Yeah, like Rocky or Creed yeah. or something, or like at least something with like more funny moments. Like <laughs> I was snatch. trying to find a rocking comedy. A uh, uh, rocking. I was trying to find <laughs> a rocking comedy. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was trying to find a boxing comedy. Snatch. When we were talking, but that's not really a boxing film though. Like it has uh, boxing yeah, scenes. Yeah, I feel like it's not it, really a boxing there, film either. It, basically, there are like zero boxing comedies out there. As I found, I think there's a film called Grudge Match, right? With like an old Robert De Niro, oh, really? but uh, but, but I mean, oh yeah, a, Grudge- lo- a lot of ah. snatch, 
a lot of Snatch is boxing, and it's considered a boxing film. Is it? Is it? Yeah. No, it's like it a is. crime. It's like a crime. Yeah, it's like a gangster drum. Yeah, gangster comedy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. it is definitely what's his hundred percent guy Richie. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, when I went on like IMDb's list, they it's do say on the list. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, fair, yeah. It could be. It, it's like a multi-genre. The, during the boxing scenes in that movie, all end in like one punch anyway. Yeah, it's like a million dollar baby, or like. <laughs> uh, well, it's like uh, Sherlock Holmes. You yeah, know? That's yeah, what it reminds yeah, me yeah. Of. <laughs> well, he did direct Sherlock Holmes as well. Oh, so that is true. Similar, <laughs> that yeah, is true. Similar. Um, well, yeah. So on that note. So yeah, just next time, next boxing theme, more cheerful boxing. Yeah, films. or if we're gonna do uh, any fighting things yeah. in the future. Don't um, you think you should? The lesson you should take away from this is that you should not fight. Thereby, yes. you should not so do this white collar boxing. Yeah, don't. I know it's for charity, and that's a wonderful thing. I don't want to take away from that, but I'm scared for you, Jabril. Me too. No, no, it's fine. There's what if like, you end up in a Thai like prison? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> there's rules and regulations. They could all come guys. here together, but like Jabril could punch somebody. They could fall on a stool. There's, they die. Yeah, and he gets sent to prison in Thailand. Prison <laughs> as a quadriplegic in Thailand. Dude, and like you say, there are rules and regulations. That's what every boxer says, and then you get like an, and then you get an elbow to the knee, an elbow to the an knee. arrow to the knee. <laughs> That's the one. But you get my reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I am confident in the matchups, and because everyone trains together for eight weeks, like you know who you might fight against. And so you're not gonna you get up. like a Billy Jean or yeah, you know, they won't give you like someone who's like been boxing for the last 15 years and is like ripped and shit. No, dude. <laughs> then no. you run, okay? You yeah, see that no, person, then, you run. Yeah, no, I won't. I won't. Uh, but this is still up in the air. It's still up in the air. I signed up for it. Um, training starts end of May. Damn, you're so. gonna be shredded like 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 uh like Creed. Like Creed, well, you never know, man. Jonathan like Majors. Jonathan Majors, dude, that yeah. guy got shredded. I could, I could be like Tyson Fury, you know. Yeah. Or like, so we're gonna see you running like around London, like Rocky style. Yeah, running up the steps, running up the steps of, the, of, uh, of the, the, National yeah. the National Gallery. Yeah, National Gallery. Is that is, is that the whole the, the longest stairs in in London? No, it's not. I just, no. it, was the first, it, just it was like the first monument that came yeah. to mind with There's steps that, in it. The staircase He's that running leads around up Trafalgar to Square. Uh, it like leads up yeah, to St Paul's, but it's like it's like stair and then like a bit of a walk. Dude, and then stare. I want to see a shredded Habibi for uh, for the summer. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been shredded. I think like three years. Shredded. Yeah, shredded. <laughs> Fucking shredded. Dude. Um, but yeah. And on that note, uh, what's the next theme? It's my theme. Oh, Where yeah. we don't have to announce yeah, that yeah, until yeah, the bonus yeah. episode. Bonus time. Yeah, it's for the bonus episode. But uh, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this theme. Let me know if you liked it or if you didn't like it. Uh, we are back for season four. Guys, this is season four. Next one up is Raph's theme. Hopefully he's not sick. I won't be a dullard. Oh, yeah. I, I think, guys, we should make like a t-shirt of that review. <laughs> I think that would the be the best. The movie newbie is a dullard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm gonna make it like the homepage of like our website. Why do you website. sound Canadian oh every God. time I, you say I, I that? I didn't mention this before, but uh, during my ski trip, I was talking to some friends of mine about our podcast. Yeah, and they, uh, if they're listening, by the way, they did say they were gonna check it out. And um, I told them about our dullard review, <laughs> and one of my friends who was like, "Who the fuck said that? Let's go and fucking kick his ass." <laughs> Nobody fight. It's <laughs> not that's yeah. Nobody fight, guys. Nobody fight. No Nobody fighting. fighting. But there's no but fighting. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> no fighting. <laughs> 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 oh, baby, when did... Okay, I think we have to call it. Yeah, quiz. yeah, we're done. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and bye-bye.